while there are some principles that are quite universal for pretty much every farmer, no matter where in the world they are, there will also be things that make producing food items inherently unique to that specific place. So let's take a look at Brazil's Ribeira Valley, where traditional communities combine farming and conservation, but not without its obstacles. So in Brazil's Ribeira Valley, traditional communities combine farming and conservation. Along the banks of the Ribeira de Iguape River in Brazil's Sao Paulo state, members of the Quilombo, or traditional Afro-Brazilian community, work the land, producing mainly bananas and palm hearts. But a close look will quickly show you that the diversity of what is grown along this river goes far beyond those two delicious products. Here, the traditional Quilombola Agricultural System, TQAS, of the Ribeira Valley was declared a practice of intangible cultural heritage of Brazil by the National Historical and Artistic Heritage Institute, IFAN, in 2018. It's the legacy of the indigenous peoples and enslaved Africans who occupied the Ribeira Valley. This form of itinerant agricultural system is known to the locals as Coivara or Roco de Toco. This is an ancient farming system practiced by traditional populations in tropical forests and is based on a rotational cultivation system that combines production with the art of conservation. In short, the people cut down the trees, chop up the wood, and let everything dry out. Then it's burned, a practice that is proven to be very beneficial to the land as it helps boost the potassium, calcium, and magnesium levels in the soil. Quilombolas work the same bit of land for three to five years, after which they move on to another plot and let it fall fallow. After about 15 years, the area will again be closed, forest filled with the low vegetation known as capoeira. And this is the type of farming that comprises the basis of the knowledge of the Ribera Valley Quilombolas, with which they have successfully managed the land for many generations. Next, sowing during the waning moon. An interesting form of TQAS that is practiced in the Ribera Valley is the inclusion of the observation of the phases of the moon to determine when to start planting. According to one of the farmers there, Adnan, who works the left bank of the Ribeiro de Iguape with his father, it's always three days before the waning moon or on the first day. Adnan says that this is in order to avoid having to use pesticides. According to the practices of these people, plants that were seeded during the waning moon will not suffer any pests later on. It's just part of the Quilombola system. Nothing is done without reason, and everything is done in a traditional manner. This also means that they make do and not use pesticides. Instead, the Quilombo relies on nature to keep the production balanced and safe from pests. They believe that nature will take care of them, but that also means they must follow nature's cycle. This is how practices like sowing during a waning moon came into existence. And looking at the beautiful produce that comes from these regions, maybe there's a reason they've been doing it for so long that it's become a tradition. Following how the Quilombolas are thriving. Most of the food needed to sustain these communities is produced by the Quilombolas themselves. But relying on your own produce means that every day comes with a new set of challenges, and there are no guarantees. Adversities that could put their sustainability at risk have increased the importance of intercropping. Aside from promoting diversity in their diet and reducing insects, insects and diseases in the farms, this strategy also contributes to food security in a major way. But these people are so good at working the land that they used to produce much more than they could eat. This is how they came up with the idea to create a cooperative in 2012 called the Cooper Covale. The Cooper Covale sells the surplus production of 19 Quilombola communities, and they currently have more than 240 members. They sell about 80 different types of food items to government programs at a weekly fair in the municipality of El Dorado, and at different kinds of trade agencies and projects in the city of Sao Paulo. There's a clear need to expand their sales opportunities even further, including participation in government schemes such as the Food Acquisition Program under the Simultaneous Donation System and the National School Meal Program. But there are even more far-reaching reasons for these communities to gain a foothold in the land that has always been theirs. Where do you think you're going? We've got more to cover. Next, what kind of struggles have the Quilombolas faced? Why have they been fighting their government for nearly three decades now? How come conservation units are much less efficient than the traditional people of the land, but they were still pushed through. And what are the seeds of the future? Make sure to keep watching until the end of the video to find out the struggles Quilombolas face. The Ribera Valley region has a forest coverage of about 80%, making this region the home to Brazil's biggest continuous remnant of the Atlantic forest, accounting for about a fifth of the fragile 7% of the biome that remains today. The Ribera Valley connects the southwest of Sao Paulo State with the northeast of Panama covering more than 5 million acres, or 2 million hectares, and is also the home to more than 80 Quilombos. In Sapatu, they have been able to keep 90% of their territory preserved, which makes the fact that the government of Brazil started to see the activities of the Quilombolas 
as deforestation back in the 1980s. After that, it was illegal for them to plant on land that had always been theirs unless they were able to obtain environmental licenses, for which the process was painfully long. On top of that, the government established an environmental protection area in 2008 to further restrict the Quilombola's farming practices, part of a mosaic of 14 areas just like it, conserving a continuous stretch of Atlantic forest remnant. This has effectively hobbled the Quilombolas and their way of life, according to Fernando Prios, who is an educator and public advocate at the Instituto Socia Ambiental, ISA, which is a nonprofit that advocates for the rights of indigenous and traditional peoples. But things are changing in the wake of the pandemic, as the looming risk of food insecurity has seen the Quilombolas enacting a resolution in 2020 after years of endless struggles. This has allowed them to plan first and then seek validation from the authorities later. This resolution is expected to be extended when it runs out at the end of 2022. Following, conservation units are much less efficient than the traditional people of the land. Indigenous lands, Quilombola territories, and conservation units within the Brazilian Amazon hold the best preserved parts of the ecosystem, according to a study that was released earlier in 2022. On top of being master preservers, indigenous and Quilombola lands are also particularly effective at promoting the regrowth of degraded areas, as is stated in the same study. The irony of the whole story is that, from a national and international point of view, conservation units are less efficient for environmental conservation than territories of traditional people and communities, says Priost. Nurit Ben Susan, a biologist with the ISA who has written extensively about environmental policy in Brazil, including a number of children's books, agrees with this and has called the conservation unit model a colonial holdover. He pointed out that everyone is happy when trees are being cut down to make room for hotels and build a beachfront, while the Quilombolas are seen as backward people, while it is their way of life that has preserved the most important remaining fragments of the Atlantic forest. It took the Quilombolas 28 years of opposition for the construction of the Chijuco Alto Dam before its license was ultimately denied in 2016. On top of all the other struggles they had to face in order to be allowed to continue practicing their traditional farming system and obtaining the titles to the land that is rightfully theirs. The Tujuco Alto Dam would have been developed by Compania Brasileira de Alumnio to power its nearby aluminum plant, which would have seen the flooding of an area of 13,800 acres, or 5,600 hectares, which is the home to 580 families. The seeds of the future. One thing that has dramatically changed the way people look at things is collecting seeds. The Ribera Valley Seed Network was started in 2017 in an effort to safeguard the seeds of the native Atlantic forest vegetation and sell them to tree nurseries and restoration projects. And today, 42 collectors from four different Quilombos take part in the project. In 2021 alone, they were able to gather over 1,400 kilograms, or 3,100 pounds of seeds, which generated 120,000 ries, which is the equivalent of $22,300, or about 2,900 ries, which is about $540 for each individual collector. It's changed the way they see nature, valuing what it offers even more. To this day, they are able to sell more than 100 species of seeds, which should be enough to reforest more than 100 acres, or 40 hectares, of degraded Atlantic forest areas. In December of 2021, the seeds that were initially stored at the ISA headquarters in El Dorado got a new home in the Seed House, which is located in the Nanguara Colombo. It's made of packed earth mixed with gravel from the Ribera do Iguape River with walls 16 inches, or 40 centimeters wide, which helps preserve the seeds and young seedlings. The shells of the seed haven are filled with the seeds of plants and trees that most people will never see in real life, like Armosia or Berea, also known as goat size, and Schizolobium parahyba, also known as the Guapuruvu, a fast-growing tree that can grow up to 100 feet or 100 meters. The Valle do Ribera Seeds Network has worked tirelessly for the past few years, and they will continue to do so for a long time to come. And that's all we have to show you for now. What do you think about the government restricting the traditional peoples of the land from practicing their farming techniques, when it seems they are much better equipped to keep the ecosystem balanced than others are? Let us know in the comments what you think. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more. And thanks for watching. See you in the next one.